What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. Any resources that we create should have LNN embedded into there. Because without that and helping people with LNN, they're never going to get a quality outcome with VET. As a vocational trainer, when you're working out what literacy level your training should be at, you need to think about the literacy and numeracy requirements of the job the learner's going to do and the literacy and numeracy abilities of the learners. In an ideal world, those three things would be in balance. You'd have a, a balanced triangle of literacy and numeracy levels. This isn't always the case. So in that triangle, the literacy and numeracy requirements of the job are fixed, but you might need to um, lower the literacy and numeracy requirements of your training materials because often they're too high, and you might need to support the literacy and numeracy levels of your learners because some of the learners will have levels that are a bit too low to do the job required. So we need to keep those three things in balance and make sure that they match in the end. We use real workplace documents, we use some simulated documents, we get the students to create their own documents. So yeah, we use a variety of different things. If we stick to the same thing, then students tend to get a bit complacent. So by varying it up, it just gives them a few different views on things. In your training materials, um, try to keep the language simple. Short sentences, 10 to 20 words maximum. Use plain English, don't use complicated words, use everyday word that your learners are going to understand. Teach specialist language. If there are workplace pieces of jargon they need to learn, then teach them in particular and make sure learners know how to use them correctly. But in general, keep your training materials simple, clear, um, lay them out clearly, have clear headings, use bullet points and numbering to make your points clear. Use lots of white space on a page to make the points stand out on the page. Don't write more than you need to. Don't explain twice, explain once. A lot of our words are foreign to them. Uh, a lot of the words they, they're not familiar with and uh, possibly have uh, a double meaning. So then we have to explain uh, in engineering terms the context of that word. We tell them that if I said we use a tap most people would think something the water comes out of, but we use a tap to produce the thread. So we would show them what a tap is, and obviously we would demonstrate how a tap works. The idea of the layout of the workbook was just simply keep it simple. If it's simple, people can follow things. If it's cluttered, if it's messy, if it's got lots of words in it, they can't understand things, but if you give them a picture, then you give them the words that go with the picture, they're usually reasonably right to follow things. So I use visual aids as much as I can. Um, yeah, so like the models that the teachers have made up for me. Vocational trainers aren't just training, they're also assessing. So you really need to think about the literacy levels of your assessments as well as your training materials. Um, you might adjust all your training materials so that the language is appropriate for the learners. But if the language level of the assessments is too high, uh, you're setting your learners up to fail. So think about your assessment design. Instead of having a long wordy question which asks the learner to write half a page, think about the certificate level that you're training at. Is it AQF 1 or 2 or 3 or 4? Think about what those learners will have to read and write in the workplace. Are you asking them to read and write a lot more in their assessment than they will in the workplace at the end? So you might adjust your assessment questions. You might have short answer questions. You might ask, do oral questioning with someone whose reading and writing is, is um, not fluent, but who knows the content. You might um, ask them to do a visual project to explain things to you, to take photographs, to document their competence in other ways which don't require reading and writing. I think their final assessment is they've got to price the materials for a project. So we just sort of looked at what they were doing, which was concreting, brickwork, a bit of timber, and then thought what sort of project could we come up with that would satisfy those criteria. 
but basically the math skills were big emphasis on perimeter area volume. If they didn't get that, you really can't do anything. So what we did was that we um, took the curriculum of hospitality and we put all those skills of literacy within the activities that the um, person was doing in the workplace. They didn't even know that they were being assessed in elements of literacy and numeracy. So I think the message is quite clear that if you do it separately as an RTO rather than putting it into your curriculum, you'll find that your completion rates will be seriously affected.